Welcome to how to create your presentation easily, conveniently, and quickly. In case we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I am Patricia Fripp, your host, and welcome to my birthday month. In every year, the month of April is my birthday celebration, so I consider every activity is part of that celebration. We are thrilled, although we know you're not alive, well over 800 people have registered. Our goal is to keep this to 40 minutes, and we understand if you're asking us a lot of questions, we want to satisfy you, so we will keep going. We will respect your time and certainly not go longer than an hour. So whether you are live or watching the replay, thank you for your interest in how to organize your presentation. If you're a regular, you know I have a sidekick who is the Director of Client Experience for Fripp VT and the moderator of all our webinars. Paul will tell you how you can engage with us and tell you about our polls. Take it away, Paul. Hello everyone, on the right hand side of your screen, you will see a chat window. Within that chat window, you can enter your short specific questions that will go the Patricia will answer throughout the call. In addition to that chat area, there is a polling question section that will pop up when we ask a polling question. The first question will be, are you a professional speaker, corporate speaker, or sales professional? Then we have two other questions after that. Just click your answer, click vote, and then we'll discuss the results on the call. And we, of course, we never know of all the individuals who sign up from all the different parts of my professional life, how many are actually live. And when I say if you're a professional speaker, that means if you have an interest in becoming a professional speaker, if you're a trainer or a coach. So it's however you self-identify. We understand uh, perhaps you're a sales professional who also considers themselves a professional speaker. However you identify, it just helps us with how we how we communicate the subject based on who is actually live as we look at your presentation first of all you have to have something to say so let's look at your content where do you get your content and then the subject of this presentation is how do you organize it how do you put it together and then how do you deliver it? And we will not do much about delivery today. And very often people say, oh, Patricia, I got my speech together. Will you just coach me on how to deliver it? Now, if you know me, you know I can be a little cheeky. And I usually say, why would you want to perfect a badly scripted, poorly structured presentation? And bottom line, you really wouldn't. So I'm not saying when someone comes to me, it is, but we always have to step back. And it all starts with the framework of how you've organized your remarks, assuming that you know what content to go into your presentation. So, Paul, what is the makeup of this audience? Well, we have 57% professional speakers. 27% corporate speakers and 16% sales professionals. All right. Well, we will make sure that we focus on all areas of our organization. Now, if you are a professional speaker, remember you get paid for what you know. You get paid well for delivering it well. And of course, if you are a leader, if you want to inspire action and commitment, the more powerful your communications are, the more that is likely to happen. And if you are a sales professional, when everything else is equal, the presentation makes the difference, especially if you are the highest price option. So speaking is certainly going to make a major difference. So as we're looking at your content, if you're a professional speaker, it might be about your life. It might be about your expertise, your book, your research, your study. If you are a leader, it could certainly be what you are communicating the strategy for this year. It might be uh, rally the troops. So whatever you 
you want to communicate, you have to have something to say to organize. As a sales professional, you're talking to your prospects or perhaps ongoing relationships with your customers. The, the way you are going to resonate with your audience before you actually organize your content is to think as an audience advocate. I frequently ask, Patricia, what's the number one secret of delivering a presentation of which there isn't one secret? However, if there were, it would be that your subject is of interest to your audience. And that means you have to look at your subject and what you are saying from the point of view of the audience. What are they curious about? What would they want to know? How does your message affect them? If it's in a sales situation, how will their company be better off because of a relationship with you? Now, Paul, we asked where people knew me from to sign up for this webinar. What is that information? Absolutely. We have 61% in person. They've heard you. 21% they've heard you virtually. 2% other and 16% it's their first time hearing you. Well, welcome to a fraternizing experience. So thank you. So assuming that you know what is going in your presentation, the best approach is not to immediately put it into your PowerPoint. I love PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint. We will be using a little PowerPoint in this presentation. Understand that PowerPoint is a visual aid. It is not a scripting aid. And if you put together your presentation in a PowerPoint, the chances are you're going to have to have more words. Now, for many of my corporate clients, especially if it's a somewhat complex issue and they have a lot of content and they often say, well, this is for the handout. People are going to read it who aren't coming to the session or aren't on the webinar. Well, in that case, you're going to have two versions. You might have the version that you can read and understand and then the version with less information when you are live. And the best way to look at this is if you turned up for that presentation and you didn't have a PowerPoint, with the power of your personality and your communication skills and knowing what it was you're communicating, would they get value? The answer is yes. If you sent the PowerPoint, even a detailed handout, they might get information, but it's not the same as if you were there. So you are the star. And the idea is organize your presentation and then you decide where do I need my visual aids to make the point? So the, the structure comes first, then you add the PowerPoint. Look at your presentation from the point of view of your audience based on your subject. What are they interested in? And if you have mixed audiences, as we do, we have speakers, we have leaders, we have salespeople. You have to communicate that you know that they are all there. So some subjects or some of your talking points might be focused more to one area than the other. But make sure you acknowledge to every community that is in your audience. Now, when you are structuring your presentation, and we're going to bring up a little virtual frip to talk about this. Once you've got all your content, which I recommend is on a flip chart, a, a whiteboard or a yellow pad. Now we're going to put together our presentation, our structure. And it's all tied around what is the big idea or the central theme. So Paul is going to bring up a segment of Frip VT, which is my interactive online training program available to everyone 24 seven to explain what the premise, the dominant thing, the big idea is in your presentation, because everything is built around this one point as as a before you get to the next Part. And this is what makes it easy, convenient 
and quickly and effective when you understand this. Take it away, Paul. To create your speech structure, your first step is to answer the question based on your subject. What is your premise or central theme? This is the big idea you want to get across. If I were to ask you, if you had one sentence rather than 20 or 45 minutes for your presentation, what would you say? If your answer is in one sentence and not a paragraph, you probably have your central theme. This is what I call the premise of your presentation. The dictionary definition of a premise is a basis of argument leading to a conclusion. Once you have your premise, then you list your key talking points or what I call your points of wisdom into the outline of your presentations. Your talking points prove your premise. They make your case for you. Now, just to make sure you were paying attention, to create your speech structure, your first step is to... See, when you're in, in FRIP virtual training, because this is interactive and we want to make sure you learn, then what we do is we have the, the testing and tracking built within the system for you. So I become your personal speech coach. So now, Paul, what we're going to do is bring up the PowerPoint because your premise, your big idea, your central theme is the foundation that you structure your presentation around. And this is a this is a premise formula that works with many presentations. So, for example, one of the speeches that I give every year at the American Payroll Association is how to sell yourself and your idea and your ideas. My audience is payroll managers. So after the opening of my presentation, I. I say. Every payroll manager can sell themselves and their ideas. And the audience would think, wow, how can I do that? And then you would say, buy whatever the subject of your talk is. And how do you get there? And that's your point of wisdom. So the premise of this is every FRIP webinar attending can simply, easily and quickly organize their presentation. Oh, I want to do that. How can I do that? Well, the talking points are, first of all, you you start with the creative process, the what is going in your presentation. You do not pick up your PowerPoint. What you do is outline the content and then come up with the central theme that will structure your presentation. Now, sometimes we are selling a subject. You can sell yourselves and your ideas. You can structure a presentation uh, quickly and easily. What you might sometimes do is sell the result of your presentation. So, for example, I could say every payroll manager can get promoted. Oh, I want to do that. How do I do that? One, you have to learn to sell yourself and your ideas. Can you see how this works? For our friends who are professional speakers, if you have a soft subject, it might be health and wellness. It could be... Um, healthy living, exercising, what could be considered a soft subject. So what you are selling is not that you need to meditate, not that you need to eat vegetables. What you're selling is that your audience, the employees of whoever has hired you to speak, can be more productive. 
Oh, how can they be more productive? By learning to have a healthier lifestyle, whether it's eating right, exercising, uh, meditating, uh, build some relaxation into every day. So your premise and this premise formula, and if you just take this for every presentation and just see if it works. So every, who is this audience? And even if you deliver a similar presentation, you need to focus on this audience. So this is every manager can, every speaker can, every sales professional can, because even though your subject matter might be somewhat generic, it could apply to most professionals, we need to focus in specifically on this audience at this time. What can they do? It's either what you're talking about or the result of it. You know, if you said that, they would think, how do I do that? Which keeps them engaged. They don't physically ask it, but they think it. And then your points of wisdom are your talking points to get there. So I hope that helps. Now, if you are a sales professional, you are not going to state your premise, but I'll tell you what it is. Very simply, your company is better doing business with our company than our competition. And what does the speech structure do? What does it do? It proves your premise that you are the best option for your prospects. Every movie has a has a, a premise. Every book, every song has a premise. So then from, once you have the premise, you are ready to put together your speech structure. Now, if you signed up for our last webinar, you know it was all on openings because the first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds has the most impact. Come out punching, grab the audience's attention because we all know Whoever your audience is, it could be your team members, it could be someone you're trying to sell to, it could be an audience who was made to hear you speak, it could be perhaps associates that were new to your company and they were acquired. They didn't choose to work for you. How do you make it about them? One, you get their attention and there are plenty of options and uh, that is available for you if, if you didn't sign up for it. The opening of your presentation, the close, as important as they are, they might not be what you write first. Because after you have the premise, which of course, the big idea, you need to always be reminded to ask yourself, what is the audience thinking? Why would they care? What is the specific interest in your subject. That's good to keep in mind. So once from whatever opening you have, it could be a story, a question, a, a statistic, a statement of fact, you lead into somehow you might, if I'm talking about presentations, I often say my premise is uh, one of my presentations, I start with a story and the and the the punchline is life is a series of sales situations. The answer is no, if you don't ask. And so then to transition into the body of the speech, I will say, and we are here to sell you on the concept that. So from your opening, you transition into the body of your speech, which is the structure, the organization. So as you can see on the left, these are your points of wisdom. They are your talking points. And there are different ways to look at how you put together your chunks of content. The, and now, if you have perhaps an eight minute speech and Paul, you might want to ask our friends how long their um, how long their uh their presentations usually are, because that might make a difference in their speech structure. So each chunk of content, and, and I'm frequently asked, do they have to be the same length? Uh, not necessarily. They're going to somewhat be in harmony, but some of your points are more important than the others, and they would take longer. And 
you might be thinking, well, these three options that you have here, they're not the only three options, but do they have to be included in every presentation? No, not necessarily. Uh, it could be one formula throughout. These are options for you to help you in your presentations. So let's just start. You, Your first talking point. Now, depending on your subject, I don't know what it would be. If I perhaps I'm talking to sales professionals and my first point may, might be if you sound the same as everybody else, you have no advantage. All right. That sounds interesting. Now, give me an explanation of that. And I might say, well, most sales professionals, they follow a certain formula. Hi, my name is John Smith. I work with this company. We've been in business for so many years. Uh, this is what we're well known for. We have this unique methodology. We do business with this types of company and would like to do business with you. That doesn't work. And you don't want to sound the same as everybody else. So I might give you an example of how you might be more appealing. So one, it might be, let's work on the principle that everyone is more interested themselves than you. So why don't you structure your presentation from the point of view of your audience? You might talk about them before you talk about your company. So it might be congratulations. What are they proud of? And then you might say thank you for the opportunity to discuss how, do, and in a nice way you're going to say how selecting the ABC company could very well be the perfect choice to help you accomplish this goal. So that might be an example of how you don't want to sound the same as everyone else. You structure it differently. Now, the application, what would I want this audience to do with that? I would get them to revisit their presentation as it is now, change the structure. And then I might give an example of somebody who did that. So, Paul, uh, the statistics we have, is it 57 percent who speak for less than an hour? Yes, 57% an hour or less, and of course, 43, it varies. And then we have we go. some people answering in the chat, about 10 minutes long with five minutes of Q&A, mm -hmm. and then from 10 minutes to four hours, so it's just more of the it varies. Okay, good. And of course, that's what we would, it, that's what we would expect, because this is everyday life. Now, what you also find in everyday life, especially in a corporate environment, that what happens is you have the opportunity to deliver frequently and it's unplanned. You're not on the agenda or you've got 30 minutes notice to come up and give a presentation. This is why this is so valuable. If you are a convention speaker, the one question to ask the meeting planner or who's ever in charge of the meeting is, if you run behind, do you want me to deliver the one hour that I've been booked or do you want me to keep you on on schedule? And based on over 30 years of being paid to speak at conferences, I promise you at least 85 percent of the time they will see keep us on schedule. Very often what they do is say we built the flexibility within the schedule, if that is a smaller meeting. With the big convention, I promise you, they want you to stay on time, no matter what they paid you or how famous you are or how important your, your content. So this is why holding the overview of your speech structure in your mind will be very helpful. So give me an explanation, an example, an application for this audience, and perhaps then an example. You might look at one of your talking points or the whole presentation from a historical view, uh, the past, present, future. This is a format that's going to be in every January sales meeting, every celebration, perhaps every new fiscal year, an introduction of a new process or a new product launch with your company. It's this is what we've done in the past. 
This is where we are now. These are the plans we have. And when implemented, this is where we expect to be by year end. Uh, this is also a format. I I work a lot with people in HR who are going to, uh, they're going to have new employee meetings. So you might talk about the past of your company, how you got to be where you are now, where you are now and say, with your contributions, you're going to help us to go into the future. And this is where our leadership expects to go. Another formula that's very popular would be a, a, a challenge solution formula. And then what is your advice or what is your proof, for example, from your recommended solution? So however long your presentation is, you are going to do a review. Now, I recommend you do the review based on your premise. So you might say, how do you organize a presentation quickly easily and effectively or how do we increase the quality of our presentation skills how do we lead a more productive life you so you introduce a rhetorical question based on your premise or big idea then you deliver your talking points it's a reminder of what you've discussed if you tell stories within each segment, you might say, just like John, we recommend you this. Or like Susan, do this. So if you've introduced characters, so there's been a story that goes along with this, you can bring them back. Then if it's appropriate, if you're opening up for Q&A, then you'll say, and this is the time. And, and, let people know how long you have. We have 10 minutes for your short, specific questions. And you, and you really want to keep them short and specific about the subject. Of course, you can't always control an audience, but that's ideal. And then you want to close on a high. Do not close on questions. This is a mistake many people make. Now, certainly what you can do, you... You often, you often will handle questions and how often have you seen people walk, say, well, thank you. And that's it. Cause you don't want to be at the mercy of a bad question. And, and often people don't ask questions. What they do is they make their own comments. So depending on the situation, and you might want to just say, and your question is, and your question is, and your question is. And then you want to close on a high. Your last words linger. And so you have to allow time that you can do that, even if your your close is fairly short. And we recommend that you challenge them somehow to take advantage of what you have helped everybody with. So with that, Paul, if you can just bring it back to me, we have one more slide. We'll come up in a few minutes. Uh, do we have any specific questions based on uh, what people have been thinking? Yes, uh, we have a few questions from the first one from, let's see here, Tom. Is it helpful to send your PowerPoint info in advance? Well, that depends on the situation. Some organizers want to see it. Now, I recommend that, and, and more and more organizers now, they don't want you to run it off your own computer. They want to have it on their own their own board that the technology people with the big conference that who the engineers are going to run it in the back of the room. So in that case, you need to and you need to always honor all time. So if they say we need a month in advance, you better have it in a month in advance. Uh, it's a good idea to always take 
your presentation on some sort of thumb drive or device because once in a while, and we've all had it, for some reason, your computer doesn't work with their technology. I had it a couple of weeks ago. So we had to run it off somebody else's presentation. Now, I use quite a lot of video in my presentation. So ideally, in that case, uh, you need to have it embedded into your slide rather than just attached. Uh, you know, it might be in a folder with video clips. Next one. We've got John. How long should the open dialogue be, for instance, architects help, um, helping brokers close sales effectively and quickly? Well, I, I, the opening dialogue, as far as the opening. Now, if this is a, a sales presentation and any type of presentation, it's very good if you're in a situation where you can actually smooth with the audience. You talk to people ahead of time because you're building rapport before you even speak. Now, if this is a presentation, and we certainly have, have presentations we've recorded on sales, the outline of a sales presentation, and I recommend a certain formula, which would always be congratulations. What do you congratulate them about? Uh, because you want to talk about them first. Then you never thank people for their time. You thank them for the opportunity to discuss how our option can be best for them. However you phrase that. If people have got, have, have been working with you to prepare you for this meeting, which usually happens in these type of more formal presentations for business, make them look heroes for their bosses. Um, John and Mary have been very, very gracious uh, and generous with their time and information. And they tell me your biggest challenges, your greatest opportunities, your areas of interest are. Then you go through what they are and your presentation is structured around that, not about your company your other satisfied clients, the history of your company, uh, your leadership. This is organized within your chunks of content where you focus on what their challenges are first. You will really stand ahead of your competition when your presentation is designed around, whether it's challenges, interests, what they want to hear about if that makes sense. So I would get to the point fairly fast. You might have an opening. I would say probably depending on the length of your presentation with the sales presentation, I'd say uh, within five minutes and probably a speech, within five minutes you're into what could be considered the body of your speech. Paul? All right. With from Carl, I learned a lot of presentation skills from Toastmasters. Any thoughts on this? And then just to, for a comment, so, uh, Marcia mentioned that improving your skills using Toastmasters alone can be a slow process and you're dependent upon the skill set of that group. Better to work with a coach and then keep honing at Toastmasters. Well, yes, there are different ways to to learn how to be a great speaker. We, of course, are just going to show you one of them. So, one, there is plenty of information around and Toastmasters is a great way to practice and learn some basic skills in a safe, supportive environment. And so therefore, I joined Toastmasters in 1975. It is a wonderful environment. However, you are, you are going to be, you're going to improve based on the quality of the feedback that you are getting. So I was lucky we had very seasoned people in the club I belong to. Uh, so that itself will not get you where you need to go, because I'm sure you would not have signed up for this webinar if you did not realize it doesn't matter what your career is, what your occupation, being able to speak in a clear, concise, incredible way, to be confident to stand up and communicate in high stress situations, that will give you a competitive edge. And of course, there are people like me who deliver webinars and have online 
uh, training programs, which are very cost effective. So, Paul, what we'd like you to do is bring up the last slide and then we'll go into VT again. So uh, if you like the information that you get from me in digestible chunks, then FRIP VT, which is my FRIP virtual training, is it's a web based online, highly interactive training where it's the best of what I have learned in studying for over 30 years. We know everybody is busy. In other words, you need to have help when it's convenient for you on any device. And you want to be confident that you're learning from someone who really knows what they're talking about. And this is FRIP virtual training. So if you want to go to FRIP VT, take a trial. You'll get a chapter on openings, on stories and on sales. If you like it, hit join. And as you were gracious enough to sign up, please, we will offer you a special, which is a coaching client price. If you use a FRIP as your coupon code, you save 20%. So to put this in the context, you've got the absolute best information from a top coach available 24-7 uh, for after initial $237 first month, 23 a month, as long as you want to subscribe. There's So there's all aspects of presentation skills available for you. So let's, uh, Paul, are there any more questions at this point? Yes, we do have a few more. Um, for Carl, the concept of a premise can apply to sending an email message by stating the premise in the subject line. Any thoughts about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All the principles in any one discipline are exactly the same as the principles in any other discipline. And so certainly email communication, which gets you a, a call, which gets you more uh, an appointment to go into depth, which gets you to a formal presentation, use the principle. And here's another very important part about that email is, and I've just been proofing them for a Fortune 100 company for a webinar this week. And it's, it's, it's so much what I want to do, or it's giving information. I know you want to give something of value about a trend, but there needs to be some nicety to engage. I've taken your attention. Be gracious about it. And you focus language, but the principles are all the same. Uh, so, so Paul, are there any other specific questions? Yes, um, from Bob, would you use the same structure for written paper, which you pretty much answered that with the email. Um, then we have from Jenny, when you're doing a training session with lots of information to get out there, what advice would you give to keep people interested and help them retain it all? All right, well, if you can get, go back a slide, Paul, to the speech structure, and we're going to look at as if this were a seminar. So at the end of each chunk, as it were, then if this was a seminar, you would probably have some activity that would reinforce. And w when I have, you know, it's more of a training program, a longer session, I am going to interact on a very regular basis and ask people, what did they learn from that? How does this apply to them? So if you want people interested, you have to keep them engaged and it has to be very obvious to them uh, how this is practical for their everyday life. So any other questions, Paul? Yes, from Maria. Yeah. What about presenting research studies? How can I present with the excitement I feel about the study itself without losing the attention of the audience and the methodology? Well, you need to, as you are looking at the speech structure here, so obviously you are going to open with some sort of story about what this research is proving, why you are passionate about the subject, what, what this information can do to them. And as you're going to have an audience which is different segments. Some people will know a lot about it, some less. Then what you want to do is start with a higher level 
and then gradually get narrower and what I call fat and skinny uh, speaking. So you don't start too detailed oriented uh, if because if you lose the people who aren't as technical, then that will uh, they'll never get them back. So you go from big picture to more specific. So I hope that helps. So, Paul, would you like to go over to Fripp VT? Um, I just have a look and see if there are any other questions. Uh, okay, we have one for international speech competition uh, using the speech structure. Well, consider an international speech structure. So, Paul, let's go to another chapter within speech structure. And uh, so with an international speech contest, consider it one chunk of content. So what? you've got one big idea, as it were, and then different situations about it. So it's one chunk of content. It's not all the three talking points. And then I will. Uh, oh, someone good. An amazing resource worth every cent about Frit V2. Good. So we'll just pull. Let's look at. Um, how about understand, understanding the Fritz speech model? Why don't we just have a minute of that to show individuals? And then you can, while we're playing that, just look and see what other questions I need to answer. When you look at the Fritz speech model, you will see the circle at the top and the circle at the bottom. These represent the first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds of your presentation. It is important to come out and immediately connect with the audience and close on a high. We don't necessarily write the opening of the presentation first. However, you do need to be aware of how important it is. In movies, they call the opening the flavor scene. The audience will be very influenced by the first 30 seconds to two minutes. We want them to think, wow, this is going to be good. Or what an interesting approach. Or this is better than I expected. As you are putting together your remarks, ask yourself, what is the audience thinking as they come into the presentation? All right. OK, so you see within Fripp VT, we have all aspects. We showed you some samples from structure is that is the subject. So, Paul, if you bring it back to me. So let's do a quick review. One, your presentation doesn't start in your PowerPoint. It starts on paper, a flip chart. Then when you look at everything that can go in your presentation, what is the big idea, the central theme or the premise? Look at your premise from the point of view of the audience, this specific audience. The premise, focus on this audience, even if it's a subject you deliver frequently, why would they care? Then put together your talking points and calling them points of wisdom reminds you that you have to say something worth listening to. And with stories, examples, explanations, statistics, you build out that point. And don't forget the power of the good story that helps explain the complex issues. You are then when you've gone through, you're going to do your review based on your central theme perhaps with the rhetorical question, how can we, if it's Q&A, remember you do not close on Q&A, you're going to close on a high. And you might want to look at how did you open in, in the beginning to see if there's a way you can tie it around in a circular formula. We encourage you to go to Fripp VT, as in Fripp Virtual Training, on powerful persuasive presentations, and at very least, take a trial. And remember, if you would like to join our community and enjoy a 20% discount, use Fripp. So with that, uh, I'll just look, Paul, are there some, some more questions we need to address before we wave goodbye to our friends? Yes, we have from Lisa. 
what is the best way to structure an ask if you're asking for donations at an event? So you're as asking for donations. Yes. Okay, good. Well, I assume this is then in that case, what I would do, you're going to tell a story about a person who benefits from your charity or your foundation or whatever the entity is. Then you might tell a story about how uh, your organization was founded and why. You might then tell a story or uh, about the progress that you've had and what you're most proud of and how many people you've helped. And then you might say, at this point, you're probably wondering, how can I help? And you can help three ways. One, with your time. Two, with your money. Three, with your influence. And of course, we would certainly take a combination of them all. So that is the best way to do it after you have emotionally connected with the stories of the people you help and why your organization was put together. And then you might want to close, uh, let people know who they can talk to about more information, take questions, and then you're going to close about one of your most recent or your favorite success stories. Paul? Is the structure different for a one day seminar? If so, how? Ah, well, consider uh, it's very similar, but consider the structure to lunchtime, then afternoon, or it might be depending. It might be to the coffee break after the coffee break. Uh, depending on the interaction, you'd probably do that in the morning and do the same in the afternoon. Because remember, those circles can go out forever. So it's different examples, different case histories, get audience involvement, get roundtable discussions. But it, it, it is the same. Don't think because you got four days that you can waffle around for the first 55 minutes. You still need to get to the point. And it's good to somehow conclude what's happened in the morning and let them look forward to coming back after the break and then start off well again and then close to go to lunch and leave them wanting more for the afternoon. Paul? All right, then we have, this is slightly off topic, but I'll, it's a good question. When speaking for free at a conference, how do you ask for future paid speaking commitments? Well, one, in your introduction, uh, you have, in introduction, you have it written that you help organizations. So the fact that this is for nothing, that's let somebody else say it. Within your presentation, within the talking points of your structure, you're going to give specific examples of how you help people. And then before your close, after the Q&A, uh, before your close, you might say, now that you have a new best friend who's an expert on presentation skills, uh, if you know any other, if your organization or, or anyone you know could benefit from presentation skills training or online learning systems, please let me know. We appreciate referrals and I'm happy to talk to you, you know, when the session is over and then you're going to close. Next one, Paul. That is, let me double check to make sure that is all we have right now. Well, perfect. Well, we we thank you for your active participation, for being part of my birthday celebration. We when you receive the replay, you will also have the speech diagram blank that you can fill in and help with your own organization and a special report on on that will help you with your presentation put together. We will continue to communicate with you in ways that can help you improve your presentations and look for invites for other webinars. And uh, we'll also let you know some of the popular sessions, obviously on sales presentations and perhaps openings were of interest to you. So you will hear from us in the future. And thank you for those of you saying happy birthday in every language. 
Uh, thank you very much, Paul, for your help, invaluable help as always. And this is Patricia Fripp. And my last line linger is, and it will tie from one of your questions. And that is, you asked, how do you get your audience to remember when you're giving them a seminar? Well, here is a li dirty little secret from the training industry, which I have made my living in very comfortably for over 30 years. And that is when you have a great speaker, an interested audience, and a subject that the audience wants to hear about and is well communicated, after two weeks, they will have forgotten 70%. The only way you will learn any subject is with repetition and reinforcement in ongoing digestible chunks to make it part of your life. So that is why we recommend that you go over to Fripp, a VT. Our members make sure it's a it's a short daily habit. And for new friends, take a trial and see what it's all about. And next time I talk to you, I will be older. Thanks. Repetition and reinforcement.